National Master James Canty III here with chess.com. And today we have game of the day. With the white pieces, we have Stockfish. And with the black pieces, we have Leela Chess Zero. Let's get right into it. Here we are. We have E4 and C5. A Sicilian, right? Something we're all used to. One of the sharpest ways to play against E4. And after C5, there's Knight F3 and Knight C6, World Championship fashion, as we'll say, because we saw a lot of Ross Limo in the last World Championship with Fabiano and Magnus. Bishop to B5 will be a move here, but uh, we can just play D4. And after D4, there's C takes and Knight takes, where you can go a multitude of ways here, playing D6 or E6 or Knight F6, uh, Sveshnikov fashion, even E5 or A6, all these moves, even G6 as well. There's many moves you can make, but this one is a new one. Hold on, here we go. D5, what is this? I have never seen it in my entire life. I don't know about you, but this move right here is actually called the Nimzo American Variation. That's a new Sicilian to me, probably new to you as well. But of course, we learn a lot from these engines. So very, very strong stuff. D5, E takes D5, Queen takes D5, and now Bishop to E3. Now, I think Black's actually already equal here, just having open open line for the Bishop. Another one's coming, no weaknesses for both sides. Fairly an equal game. This is probably why you don't see D5 at uh, at the, the bigger levels and higher levels, and even in your own games. D5 is just not a move that usually we would play. But now we can start playing it because Leela Chaz Zero is playing it. So Bishop E3, Knight to F6, developing knight to c3 attacking the loose queen that is already out queen to d6 and after queen to d6 knight takes c6 can be answered with queen takes or pawn takes uh c6 but after queen to d6 no trade says stockfish bishop e2 we're just going to keep developing bishop d7 same for black if you notice every move they're trying to develop pieces as much as possible because you still got to get the pieces off the back rank to make this thing work after bishop to d7 we'll watch this very strong move here knight b knight d to b5 and attacking the queen if queen takes d1, you have rook takes, knight c7 is looking fine, and knight takes a7 can be a thing if you think about castling, or rook to c8 in those fashions. So not fun for black. So instead, uh, we go queen to b8. This is a move that you would see a lot in the French defense advanced variation, or usually in sometimes the Milnerberry gambit, sort of times where you gambit the pawn on d4. Queen sits on b8, but the difference is there's no pawns in the center at all. So this is a little bit different. You would love to get bishop f4 in, but that can always be answered with e5. And a6 is definitely coming, so you need to move fast, says white. So uh, queen b8, queen to d2, really nothing we could do here. Nothing strong besides bishop f4. a6 is coming anyway, because because when they cross the line, what's the line you ask? Well, anything one to four is wall white. And anything eight to five, five to eight is all of black's pieces. Anything that crosses the line that is not my piece needs to go. So this knight on b5 is, is very live and he got to go. So a6 is a big boy move, kicking the knight. a6, and now we could just move the knight. Now the best defense is offense. I love to say this all the time because it's true. Before you actually go into defense, can you do anything offensive first? Now, let's see. We do have bishop f4, but that's going to be answered with e5. Rook d1, they can just take it because this is not actually attacked at all. Maybe castles or castle queenside, kind of the same thing. So you might just have to move this knight or play uh, something like bishop b6. Oh, yeah, we going for it, says Stockfish. Oh, we're about that life for real. Bishop b6, wow, with knight c7, and we send him to heaven. That game is going to be over. Knight c7 is going to be very, very strong here. Bishop b6 is a big boy move. Wow, from a big boy like Stockfish for big engine. Bishop b6, um, now after captures, which it did happen, because knight c7 is detrimental. After a takes b5, knight takes b5, knight c7 is check. Flex real hard. It's going to be some trouble here. So kind of no way to stop this. Knight d5 is always answered with queen takes d5. And so we have e6. After e6, there is knight c7 and then king e7. And this is about to get very strange here, guys. Very, very strange. And we say strange because like as a human, we would make much different moves than you would see from a computer. Of course, they can just calculate way more than we can in depth with accuracy to the, uh, the utmost extent. So king to e7, we would love to get queen d6 in. But he plays bishop f3. It says stockfish goes for bishop f3, which is attacking the c6 knight as well. Um, just and, and also this move here stops knight e4, which is extremely strong and very annoying. Knight e4 was a very strong move, so bishop f3 is actually necessary, which is pretty good. It's just hard to find this move. Bishop f3, and then there's rook a4 stepping out of the way, saying, Well, if you're not gonna take the rook, I'm not gonna give you another chance. So after rook to a4, there's castle queen side threatening stuff like queen to d6. But uh, miraculously, after rook c4, queen d6, it looks like game over, but it's actually not. And this is where computers, of course, are just better than us in this area of calculation. 
Now let's actually see what happens. After queen d6, king d8, and then you actually don't have any super cool moves besides just maybe either taking, where he can sidestep you either way, actually, which is kind of strange how he can just sidestep us like this. But of course, uh, knight after knight to b5, there's king to e8, and actually you're just kind of repeating moves, actually. Uh, according to the engine, literally it's zeros right now. That is insane. If you do anything else, you're not winning. But this is zeros. Like, in, how is this zero? Zero what? You know what I mean? Right after king e8, it's just, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing there. But after castle, queen side, rook to c4, understanding that there's nothing. There's nothing at all. So after rook c4, there's b3 attacking the rook. And say, all right, you know what? You cross the line. Like we said, when you cross the line, you got to go. So we play b3 to attack the rook. Rook goes somewhere. Rook to d4 saying, all right, cool. Hey, go ahead. Take it. Because if you take it, I'm going to take on c7. And actually, in this position, it's a uh, fairly equal, a little bit better, slightly better for black, believe it or not. Well, why? Well, let's look at the piece count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five. But you have to remember, of course, white sacrificed that piece early on. So doing uh, bishop takes d4 looks good, but it's not actually the best move. In fact, we play queen to g5, and we live. Threatening things like queen c5, and also rook takes d4 in, the, in a lot of cases. But queen c5 is definitely a strong move. Queen g5, so rook takes, which is a forcing move, and rook takes d1 to follow up, keep pressure on the file with a smile. And now after rook takes d1, there's queen to c8, stepping out of the way, defending d7 a little bit more. Things like rook d7 could be in the air, but you don't want to sack too many pieces because you won't have enough firepower to actually win the game because you sack all your pieces. You don't have anything left. So queen to c8. Nice move here from um, Stockfish actually playing b4 here, which is something I didn't see. I didn't consider at all. You're, you're, you're trying to get these moves to work is what they call the loud moves, which is like queen b4 check. Bishop c5 is a loud move. It's just in your face. Bishop takes c6. Rook takes d7. These are all possibilities. Maybe even queen back to d2. And in fact, b4 is actually a move that many people would miss. b4, more of a quiet move, more of a strange looking, surprising move. b4 h6 and instead of queen c5 in fact there's a better move when you find a good move look for a better one and based off calculation and depth that they have here that they they are able to do queen c5 still works is plus four here but queen e3 uh, uh, believe it or not is plus eight here queen e3 is just a better move believe it or not sometimes chess is extremely just a hard game chess is hard we all know this right queen to e3 now of course as a human you could win with queen to c5 queen to c5 king d8 knight takes c7 then you take this way and then we rook check and there's all kind of things that happen afterwards from this uh, but there's a lot of things that can happen with that being said though queen to e3 is the move chosen by stockfish after queen to e3, there is a knight to h7. We have to make moves like f5, maybe g5, or f6. And you got to develop. We've only used how many pieces, class? Raise your hand, Rick. One piece, two, three, four, versus, you know, these other two. And we're supposed to be up a piece, but we're really not up a piece with this piece, uh, like sitting over here in a corner, not doing anything, not helping us at all. So after knight h7, there's b5 kicking the knight. This is what we wanted to do. And a, a, a very good uh, tip to remember when you're attacking is try to remove any and every piece that is around the king that could help defend. So b4 and b5 makes total sense here because we're trying to remove the knight that is helping in some of the defensive aspects of black's position. So after b5, knight to b8, so we can keep the uh we can still keep our our piece, um, says black here. But look at our pieces, it's just a gross position to be in. You would love to be white in this position. Now, after knight to b8, guys. Look around the board. There's many moves you can make. I was surprised by this one. That should maybe give you some kind of hint, but you probably still won't get it wrong. Well, pause the video and check this one out. White to move, what would you play? Here it is, guys. Well, Stockfish says, Bishop H5, and we live. In fact, this move to me almost made no sense at all because I, who, how many of you would play Bishop H5 in this position? How many of you would have played Bishop H5? That's just a, we call that an engine move because they definitely saw something that we did not see here. Bishop H5 is very strong. It's actually cutting off some of the squares. And if the necessity or playing something like F6 or F5 now is just running into Queen C5 automatically, you know, because you can't go to King F7. King D8 is not great. And you can't go King E8 at all. And you're actually made it there. Nasty checkmate there with a double check on the King. So pretty nasty stuff. Bishop H5 is just... 
a very strange but strong move, like really strong. Watch this. After Bishop H5, there's G6. says, back that thing up, please. You cannot come over here. I don't want you all in the house like this. So after G6, there's Queen to D4, attacking the Rook. Well, equal or stronger threats, which is, of course, the best defense being offense. If you're attacking my Bishop, I'm going to attack your Rook. Rook G8, and then uh, after Rook G8, now we're going in for the kill. Queen D6, of course, and after Queen D6, there's King D8. After King D8, well, hey. You know what time it is. Knight takes e6. We in the mix. That's a double check there. Flex real hard. King goes to e8 because you have to. And here we go. Knight c7. Now, what? why do we go back? Think about this, right? What's the difference in this position and this position right here? This position and then go back this position. If you said the pawn, you are 100% correct, actually. Knight takes e6, removes the pawn from the e file that was closed. And then king e8, knight c7, now the e-file is open. Oh my goodness. Wow. You in trouble, big fella. You in trouble. Knight c7. And now after knight c7, let's actually take a look at what happens on king to d8. King to d8, we have queen e5, which is a better move because you would just keep repeating moves and actually knight d5 followed by knight f6 check doesn't work because the knight can actually capture and your queen and the bishop's hanging. A lot of stuff hanging. But after king d8, queen e5 is the best move here. In fact, actually threatening queen to e8 mate. Why? Because there's a pin here. Very, very strong pin. After queen e5, they have bishop a3. Finally, I can get a piece out. Then king to b1, and then f6, just trying to get rid of the queen. But in fact, you actually lose. You forgot about this other mate on the other side of the board. Start a new one. Have a good day. Well, it's actually not made. You have to block with the queen. But this is gross. This is gross. Nobody wants to play this one out. This one's game over. So now, with that being said, after knight c7, black is forced to take with the queen. After queen takes, well, rookie one in between move or position jug. And then after rookie one check, there's bishop e6. After bishop e6, queen takes c7, knight to c6. And after knight c6, of course, st stopping the mate, we just take it. Take the knight. Bishop a3, a a3 check. King b1 and king f8. And we great trying to get out of the way, trying not to be mated here. And then what are we going to do? We're going to cut off the escape square because the king is trying to head for the hills. Do whatever he can here to not get mated. Bishop d4 stopping king g7. F6 to stop, of course, to mate, because if anything else happens, for instance, pawn takes, well, it's simple. Mate, and we great to start a new game. This is a family channel. So let's go back. Now, bishop to d4. After bishop d4, there's f6, and rook takes e6. Nasty move here. Just eliminating all the pieces that you have. What a game. After rook h8, well, that's game over. Can you find the kill shot here? Tactics win games. I hope you did your puzzle rush today. So it is white to move here. What are you going to do? Here it is, guys. Well, Rook E8 and we great. What a big boy move from a big engine like Stockfish. Rook E8, that's nasty. After King takes, of course, because it's forced, you don't have any other move. Bishop takes G6, and then after King F8, Queen F7. Oh, yeah, that's checkmate. Checkmate and we great. Amazing game here. Sacrifice from the beginning. Now, of course, we did see a very weird Sicilian with that D5 move. Maybe not try that one at home, but definitely you can try out exactly what uh, White did today. And it's knight to D to B5, bishop B6 stuff, uh, which was very nice to see from a, a game like today. So I hope you enjoyed it. This was game of the day. I'm National Master James Canty III here with chess.com, and I'll see you guys on the next video.